Okay, Max, uh, welcome to Ireland. Um, you first crossed our radar when, as a student, you um, took a case against Facebook's Irish operations over uh, privacy. Um, can you tell me about your motivation then and the current class action suit now and, and, and just what we've learned in that whole process? <laughs> um, my motivation, I don't know, I think the whole privacy thing is kind of the debate of, of the next 20 or 30 years. Um, I see the whole thing like the environmentalist movement in the 60s where like the first people come up with like there's dead fish we should do something about it um, and that is kind of where I come from I guess and on Facebook it was really that I was studying in the US for half a year and there were guys from Facebook as a guest speaker at my university also from other companies and we're pretty much saying you can you know you can fuck the US, uh, the, Ameri uh, the European rules nothing is ever going to happen if you break them um, and quite honestly nothing does ever happen if you break them we usually pride ourselves with all these privacy laws in Europe um, and point fingers at the US for not having them and for being like the badass spying people. But the reality is that we're not really enforcing these laws. And it's really interesting how, I don't know, every parking violation is enforced, but if you just suck up the data of millions of people illegally, the worst thing that can happen to you, for example, in Ireland is an enforcement notice, which is a piece of paper saying, dear company, don't do that anymore, kisses your data protection commissioner, that's the worst that can realistically happen to you. Um, but that's not necessarily an Irish issue, that we see that in a lot of other countries too, like in Austria the maximum fine is 25,000 euro, which usually means that getting a lawyer to tell you what the law says and to be fully compliant is more expensive than just breaking it. And I think that's an overall problem that um, kind of, I think is really interesting because we're really talking about fundamental rights here, not just some consumer rights. Tech companies will do what tech companies do, um, but as people we were sleepwalking into this mess, and we still do, we, we publish stuff about ourselves that we probably shouldn't. But at the same time, we don't realise that, or we didn't realise that how, how well protected our information is going to be. Mm. Would you say that um, when it comes to policy and governments, that we've all been sleepwalking into this kind of situation? I think the biggest problem we have is that it's not tangible for the average person. Um, like if you talk about big data analytics as an example, that's something where even, even the representative of the companies can't really tell you what these guys are doing there. And um, that's the biggest problem with the whole privacy debate, um, just like, as I said, Chernobyl before, <laughs> as an atomic power debate, that it's so complicated that the average user just doesn't get it and therefore ignores it. We don't shift this responsibility to an average guy in all other fields. Um, I usually compare it to building codes. We expect that in the modern country, buildings are not just collapsing and falling on our head. No one of us has checked if this building is correctly built. We, we just assume. expect it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and same thing for hygiene laws. If you go to a supermarket and buy an apple, you have the expectation that you can eat it without throwing up. Um, in the privacy field, however, we feel that the individual consumer should know about all these things and make these decisions, even though it's impossible for the average guy to do that because no one has a lab in the basement to figure out what uh, is I don't know, on the Apple or to uh, check on the billing. Um, however, whenever it comes to apps in your cell phone, which are even much more opaque than <laughs> these analog things, suddenly the user should have the responsibility. And that's something I think is really interesting. Interestingly, the case you took against Facebook's Irish operations, because that's where their international headquarters are, uh, how did you find the experience of uh, chasing this in, again in Ireland um, in terms of dealing with the data protection authorities here and, you know, where you see this going from here mm. when, as this graduates to the European courts? You pretty much have a safe haven here when it comes to privacy. And that's something that's seriously criticized outside of Ireland, um, that we do have this tech hub here and legally they're responsible for it, but they're not taking on the responsibility of enforcing things. I know that things have changed now with the new commissioner, that at least they got much more people, much more resources, which is really necessary. Um, I don't know if the actual approach has changed by any means. Um, that's something I don't have any idea in either way. Um, so far, I still see that people that make complaints are all turned down. Um, if you look at the statistics of Billy Hawk's times at least, um, two to four percent of the complaints were even decided. All the others were not decided. Um, most of them, in my experience, all of them um, actually got an email saying we're not taking on this complaint, even though they have a legal obligation to go after every complaint. Um, and in the end, pretty much they said, if you wanna, want us to do our job, you have to go to court and sue us, knowing that this costs an insane amount of money and it's impossible for anyone, especially outside of Ireland, to force them to do it. So what we see internationally now also with the new regulation is that the European Union tries to pull out of Ireland in a way to give um, co cooperation in some way, because there's just this feeling that certain data protection authorities are not doing their job properly. Um, unfortunately, that's oftentimes connected we, with a kind of how do you call it, a nice business environment. Um, 
that actually the um, representative of the DPC in the High Court case has actually pointed out that in our case on the PRISM mass surveillance, um, that if the DPC would enforce things like that, it would harm the business businesses in Ireland, which pretty much says businesses are more important than your fundamental rights. <laughs>